Meet Sam. Sam is excited. It is his first day of work. He is also nervous as he has to navigate the London transport network. But boy scout that he is, he is prepared. He has downloaded City Mapper and has his Oyster card topped up. This shouldn't be too hard, he thought. They say you need six months of experience before plotting to outmaneuver Google or City Mapper, and he was not there yet. But he also thought the quickest way is not always the best. For instance, it wouldn't be worth grabbing onto the Northern Line to save five minutes but spend 25 under someone's armpit. As he had just moved to London and was just starting out, he could just about afford a place in Zone 4. He found it strange that Zones 5 and 6 had quicker commutes, so were sometimes more expensive. So he started his journey to work, eager to get there early to impress his new boss. But he couldn't help but feel like things were going to get messy. There were unwritten rules. Rules that had been passed down from one generation of commuter to the next. And despite not being emblazoned for all to see, disobedience of them could quite easily incur the wrath of a sideways glance. Direct glare or the worst rebuke of all, a barely audible tut from a fellow commuter. Helen, Sam's older sister, had explained to him that London Transport is not a transport network. It is a living organism, and a problem in one area will impact the entire system. No one fully understands how, but trust that it will. Sam was determined not to be someone who puts a spanner in the works. He had heard that a buggy backlog in Camden had caused delays in a Brighton to Victoria service three days later. There were only two laws to remember to obey. Law number one, do everything you can to help the flow. Law number two, do everything you can to improve the comfort of other commuters. Ease the flow and ensure comfort seemed simple in practice. It was, however, the many rules applying to them that were tricky. These proved problematic. So problematic, in fact, that failing to abide by them could be considered a sin. And as such, the rules should be treated like commandments handed down by the transport gods and were ironclad. He knew that to ignore them was a dangerous game to play. And best of all, if he obeyed these laws, he had license to judge those that did not with a suitable and subtle sneer. If he didn't obey, he was the problem. So Sam started his commute. He arrived at the platform to catch his train. The majority of people were huddled together in the same spot. He then noticed someone who looked more relaxed further down the platform. Hmm, decision time. Follow the masses or the one person who is exuding relaxation. His brain told him to follow the masses. His gut told him to move down the platform. He moved down the platform. The train arrived and he found a seat on the carriage. He then heard the conductor announce, Please move down the carriage to make space. He looked around at all the space in his carriage and was confused for a moment. He then realized that the group had huddled around that specific carriage so they could be closer to the exit 20 minutes later. It was slowing the whole process and would be uncomfortable. He jotted down in his notebook the first of the rules. Rule one, move down the platform, move down the carriage. When he got to London Bridge, he noticed a mother in a titanic battle with her pram. He sprang into action. Sam had manners. It was the right thing to do, and he knew it would help the flow three months from today. Rule two, help people struggling with buggies or bags. He made his way down to the tube. It was rammed, but strangely orderly. The train arrived, everyone got on. The doors began to close, and an arm came sneaking through to block the door closing. The doors opened and everyone waited. Someone came in, as well as his mate. This was followed up by high fives. Sam was aghast. Didn't he realize that he was holding up 600 passengers and ruining the flow? There was another tube coming two minutes later. This kind of ignorance should not be tolerated. Rule three, don't run for a tube and block the door for a mate. Exception to the rule are trains that come at intervals of 15 minutes or more. Sam's sense of smell was shocked. He was sandwiched between two conflicting aromas. On one side, there was a guy who clearly decided that showers were overrated and smelled like a pub floor on a Saturday evening. And on the other, a woman who had obviously decided that the best way to apply perfume was to actually bathe in the stuff. How could they be so ignorant of their respective stenches? Rule four, careful of your aromas. Wear deodorant, 
and gum is not optional for many. Assume you are desensitized to your own smell, so check in from time to time with a mate. Things began to heat up as the crowd started to flood the system, and Sam was bouncing around much to the annoyance of his fellow commuters. But the hand straps available to hold onto may as well have been on Mars. Then he remembered something he used on the bus back in his hometown. He had originally learnt it while on a yacht years ago. The captain's pose. He put his dominant leg slightly forward and his other leg slightly back. This gave him the stability he needed to adjust to the jolts to his body. Rule 5. In lieu of holding on with a vice grip, practice the captain's pose. Be the captain's pose. Unfortunately, not everyone knew this, and particularly annoying was some idiot who had his backpack on. Every time he turned, he ignorantly bumped a fellow commuter. Sam then realized his backpack was on. While he was gaping at this buffoon, he was doing the same. Sam quickly took off his own backpack and placed it at his feet, much to the relief of the innocent fellow commuter behind him, who was finally able to extract himself from his impromptu contortionist position. Rule 6. Take off your backpack. It's bigger than you think, and taking up an extra person. They were approaching Bank Station, where he had to get off. Sam started shuffling towards the door and politely asked to get past. People looked at him strangely, but slowly he made his way to the door. Then it happened. A Sam sandwich. The majority of the people tried to get off the train while some tourists with suitcases were trying to get on. Sam realized he could have waited as virtually everyone was getting off here. That was his bad. But anyone trying to get on the train before people have exited deserves to be run over. Rule 7. Let people off first. Don't obstruct the doors. Don't make your way to the exit too early, in the case of busy stations, or too late. Next was to go up a large set of escalators. Sam was astonished by the sheer volume of people. He was caught in the current, his movements no longer his own. He stood half in a trance, half in a bewildered daze. Then he heard the dreaded clearing of a fellow commuter's throat. Ahem, what was wrong? His instinct told him it was something he was doing. Then he realized that everyone was standing to the right. He was blocking the left. There was no room left on the right. So he bolted into action and virtually jogged up the stairs. Rule 8. Stand on the right of escalators. Walk on the left. Pick a side and commit. Pretty soon he had caught up to the person in front of him, who despite being on the left, wasn't moving. He soon realized why when he got to the top. People were being forced to circumnavigate the poor soul who had been tasked with picking up discarded newspapers. He knew he was better than that and wouldn't leave rubbish lying around, clogging up the system. Rule 9. Don't leave newspapers and other rubbish. Put it in a bin. Don't be a tool. You're a grown adult. You know how rubbish it is to have to clean up after someone else. Sam tried to mention something of the sort to a fellow commuter, only to receive an annoyed look. So Sam just smiled at him and went on his way. Rule 10. Careful initiating communication. Smile. At best it might brighten up someone's day. At worst, people will give the loony more space. They got to the ticket gates. Another bottleneck. Sam picked a lane and then committed. But there was another hold up. The girl in front's card wouldn't work. Hadn't she topped up, Sam thought to himself. He had set his to auto top up and registered his card in case it got lost. Eventually, she stepped aside to complain to a ticket attendant, like it was his fault that she hadn't topped up. One more person in front of him and then he would be through. As Sam was contemplating this, he walked straight into the person in front of him. The person didn't have his card ready? How? After all the commotion, he had plenty of time. Rule 11. Have your card ready. Auto top up or use contactless card. Don't be that guy making everyone wait while you run off and top up. Oops, just missed the last train. One last flight of stairs and Sam was in freedom. Fresh air. Well, as fresh as London air gets. He came bounding up the stairs and then, wham, the collision happened. A tourist had stopped at the top of the stairs while trying to work out where to go next. Now they were both on the floor. Sam apologized, but deep down inside, he knew that the tourist was in the wrong as they were blocking the flow. Rule 12. Hesitation creates a traffic jam. Stand to the side, especially if you have bags. Otherwise, you are the problem. 
Sam was in danger of being late now, and this was on his first day. Time to increase the pace. Fortunately, most people were trying to do the same thing. He did, however, get stuck behind someone. He tried to pass on the left. The person swayed left. He then tried the right. The person swayed right. So Sam had to go way right to get past. Could it be possible that this person was drunk at 8 a.m.? Then, as he walked past, he understood why this person had such a sway going on. They were trying to write a message on their phone. They would have been far quicker if they had just stood to the side and written it, and then on. Rule 13: Do not check your phone while walking. You are going slower and more erratic than you think. It was now the end of the day. Sam had had a really good one, but his work fitness was not high, and he was tired. He had met someone called Sanjay, who seemed like someone who he could learn a lot from. While everyone was frantic, he seemed to be calmer, more mindful. Sam had a quick team talk with himself, and then braced for the commute home. It was late, and being new to London, he hadn't stocked his kitchen yet. So he grabbed some takeaway and headed towards Bank Station. He quickly realized the error of his ways. The sardine tin nature of the carriage ensured there wasn't space for him to eat, and worst of all, it was stinking up the whole carriage. Sam felt embarrassed. He was no better than the two people he had encountered earlier, assaulting his senses with their odor. Rule 14: No smelly food. You'll either gross people out or make them hungry. Then it got worse. Sam realized his headphones weren't properly plugged in, and the speaker was playing the latest Taylor Swift song. He liked her music, but didn't want everyone else to know. After all, haters were gonna hate. But worse than that, it sounded horrible coming out through the speaker. And as everyone knows, playing music through a phone speaker doesn't make you cool. It makes you a complete tool. Rule 15: Check headphones aren't leaking sound, and absolutely in no circumstances listen to the phone speaker. It is not cool. It is not impressive to have a tinny sound irritating everyone else. Sam got out at London Bridge and was waiting for his train. He moved down the platform, and guess who he bumped into? It was Sanjay. Sam went to speak to him. I didn't know you took the same train as me. I didn't see you on the tube. Sam said more as a question than a statement. Sanjay replied, "Yes, I prefer to walk from the office. It gives me some exercise and is more pleasant than using the tube. I wouldn't normally take this train, but my train has been cancelled." Sam decided he would try walking the next day. It would save him quite a bit of money over the year, and surely would be more pleasant. Then Sam asked Sanjay, "Are you going to complain about the cancelled train?" Sanjay smiled and said, "Probably not. The commute can be stressful, and other people also just want to get home as peacefully as possible. I know the next train on my route will be packed with frustrated people, so I'm taking a slightly longer but more peaceful route. I don't bother complaining or asking updates from the staff about delayed or cancelled trains. They don't have much more information than me, and it's only going to make me annoyed." Rule 16: Retain perspective. Remember, other people also want to get home. Don't complain to or ask updates from the staff about delayed or cancelled trains. Yes, it's really annoying, but asking about it is only going to hack you off more. The train arrived, and after letting everyone off, Sam and Sanjay got on and found a seat. Then an elderly couple arrived, and they happily gave up their seats and stood. They had been sitting all day and were more than happy to stretch their legs. Then a pregnant woman got on. It was obvious. Besides the bump, she was wearing a baby on board badge. Sam was disturbed that people just kept staring at their phones, pretending not to see her. So he gave the now familiar "uh huh," and someone broke their trance and got up. Sam thought of a neat trick. If he wasn't sure if someone was pregnant and didn't want to offend, he would pretend to have seen something interesting in the distance and move in a "this seat isn't necessarily for you, but it can be if you're pregnant" manner. Don't pretend not to see the pregnant badge. If you are pregnant, put everyone out of their misery. Wear a badge. Rule 17: Give up your seat. It may not be obvious. Don't be the person who takes a seat from someone needy. It was starting to smell and get warm, so Sam opened a window. Someone was coughing. He suddenly got protesting looks. What travesty of commuter justice had he committed now? But he was getting a London stubbornness about him and thought. It may be winter, but everyone has a coat, and other people have germs. This isn't the dark ages. Everyone knows stagnant air is bad. The window being open was a good thing. Rule 18: Open a window. Fresh cold air is better than stagnant warm air. 
The carriage was starting to empty out more and more with each stop. But at one stop, someone got on and sat in the middle of three seats, putting their bag to one side. Sam thought this was so inconsiderate. Sanjay had got off by then and he was considering taking a seat. Now he would have to squeeze in next to the person, despite a surplus of seats. Rule 19. Consider what will happen when others board. Sam was now confident he could navigate the London transport network. He would adhere to the laws of flow and comfort by following the rules he had identified.